Hello and welcome to our premiere edition of Cityscape, a regular series of video chats about people doing things and places where things are happening here in Livonia. I'm Dan West, the President of Livonia Chamber of Commerce. We are Anastasia and Katie's Coffee Shop, a new Livonia business that employs young people of all physical and cognitive abilities. We are pleased to be joined by Livonia Mayor Marie Miller Brosnan, who is finishing up her second month on the job. We welcome you, Madam Mayor, to joining us today. Thanks, Dan. And uh, this was the first official ribbon cutting that you did as mayor. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about that experience. Yeah. Uh, it was quite a crowd here that day. It, it, number one, it was a great crowd, but number two, it was a great business to be mm. here to cut the ribbon for because, you know, a lot of the things that we talked about on the campaign were about making Livonia a place mm -hmm. where you wanted your children to come home to. Well, here we are, we've got two families that are creating a business so that their kids and other young adults can be working here, can mm -hmm. find a long-term viability, a life here. And so it was really full circle to be able to come and do a first ribbon cutting uh, with a business that was walking the talk of Livonia. And then second, it was super exciting because there are two young female entrepreneurs. And as the first woman mayor of Livonia, it meant a lot uh, to be here for that. And I think the moment that will stick with me forever was at the very end of the ribbon cutting, um, Katie turned around and just gave me the biggest hug, um, you know, full on embrace. And we were both uh, in it and excited um, and just really honored uh, that they are here, that they chose to make Livonia their home, that uh, this is the place where they decided to launch their big dream. Mm -hmm. And what a great concept to have uh, what these folks are doing and then going forward to bring it here to Livonia. So it was neat. Absolutely. And it was neat that that was your first official yeah. ribbon cutting as mayor. It was great. To be a part of that. So yeah. on the camp, you talked about the campaign trail. And mm -hmm. as you get acclimated to this job, you talk quite a bit about things you learned on the campaign trail yeah. and how that's the focus of you as you get into this job. What are those things that you're focused on? So first of all, it was really intentional. Uh, you know, we really spent 90 or, or nine months rather mm -hmm. out in the field collecting data trying to find out what it is that Livonia residents wanted me to pay attention to. You know, we quite honestly started out by asking the question, what is it that you want to see improved about your city? And nobody had anything to offer us. People in Livonia are exceptionally happy with where their city is at, where their city is headed. So we had to reframe things and ask, what is it that you want me as mayor to pay attention to? And with that, we instantly got four responses. Uh, 47,000 doors, and this is what we heard. Number one, keep us safe. Um, and really people are talking about making sure that we maintain um, high quality, enough police officers and firefighters. Um, we're currently short um, police officers and firefighters, anywhere from 23 to 28 police officers and five firefighters. So it's my number one job to fix that problem. And what I'm gonna have to do there is really uh, come to the bargaining table, put everything back on the table, uh, figure out what's gonna create a, a good deal for people that makes us an attractive community to come and, mm -hmm. and work in, um, while at the same time trying to fix the pipeline and expanding mm -hmm. it so that we attract more people. And at the back end, making sure that we don't have too many people retiring all mm -hmm. at once. So it, it, it's, it's not easy but we're gonna make it happen. And um, we've got some really talented people involved in making that happen. The second thing that people talked to me about was making sure that we fix our roads. I mean, that, that's not a shock to anybody. That's a big issue for folks. And really that comes down to just arm wrestling for our fair share of road dollars. As Michigan's ninth largest city, we're not getting the ninth largest slice of the pie. And so it means that at the federal, the state and the county level, we're gonna have to be in there just arm wrestling uh, to make sure that our voice is heard. And um, so we're gonna have to do a better job of that than we've done in the past. And then the third thing that people said was, make sure that you take care of our kids, their, their long-term future. And a lot of times they're talking about education, um, not understanding that there's a difference between the governance of Livonia Public Schools and City mm -hmm. of Livonia. And maybe it's not quite so important that people understand that distinction because the area where Livonia serves the public school system is the important mm -hmm. component there. And that's two spaces. Um, we make sure that kids stay safe, coming to school, at school, leaving school. And then secondarily, I do think we have a responsibility to make sure that um, our well-educated kids find jobs after they graduate. So there's been a group in the city, you've been a part of it now for 11 years, um, that's tried to put together a workforce development program that makes sure that students coming out of school with great educations that maybe are not on that four-year path to college, mm -hmm. 
find an alternative path. And there are a lot of internships and apprenticeships and on-the-job training opportunities that we have available. So we need to make sure that that's more accessible uh, to, to, the, to our children coming out of schools. So we think that as a city, if we can offer up ourselves as a conduit for, for putting some leadership in front of that effort that's been building for the past 11 years, that we're actually going to be able to brand this, um, that Livonia is going to set itself apart as a city that takes care of kids before we even know what path they're headed mm -hmm. on. And secondarily, that when businesses move here, they know we've got a well-trained workforce. Fourth thing that people said when we were knocking on the doors was, you know, make sure that we've got a city of tomorrow, a city that our children want to come home to. And they talk a lot about how do we build a downtown in Livonia? How do we make Livonia more bikeable, more walkable, more sustainable community? So Livonia Vision 21, it's a long range plan for the city designed to take us to 50 years from now, um, was put together roughly about two and a half years ago. And with $80,000 worth of investment on the city's part, we have a really clear vision for where the city uh, wants to take itself. And it's a vision that was created not by city planners, but by residents. Thousands of residents contributed over a year and a half's period of time to talking about things like, you know, what does it look like when we see the downsizing of commercial space? How do we then reuse that property and create more multifamily residential living opportunities that then in turn attract more people to our community? Um, people wanted to know how are, what's our road system going to look like when we move to autonomous vehicles? You know, mm -hmm. what is uh, you know what's it going to look like in general when we're going to mm -hmm. find drones dropping off? packages on our front mm -hmm. porches and you know how do we make a sustainable bikeable walkable community that has a high uh, concentration and branded effort around arts and entertainment and culture and uh, play and recreation mm -hmm. and how do we pull all of that together in a brand that really helps mm -hmm. sell Livonia not just for everybody who's living here today but but for my kids for mm -hmm. your kids mm -hmm. uh, making sure that they really mm -hmm. want to come home this way. And it's funny you mentioned um, Livonia 21 because it leads into our next question. Uh, recent headlines lately about the closing of Sears. Yeah. And um, actually, you and I served on the master plan committee together with about two dozen other community folks. And we talked a lot about that seven mile middle belt uh, intersection, not just the Sears property, but everything around there. And I guess, yeah, it's never good to see a business close, mm -hmm. but we see an opportunity with that property uh, uh, gonna be repurposed. And I guess, what do you see the next steps going ahead at that Sears property? Sure, so you know, I think the biggest thing um, with that Sears property is I would hope um, that Sears would take advantage of that $80,000 investment that the city made in trying to understand what the community wants to see happen. Um, because while we were looking at the overall picture for the city mm -hmm. of Livonia and where we want to see things head, we picked out three areas mm -hmm. uh, that were important to the redevelopment of the community. And that corner happened to be one of them. Mm -hmm. So we spent a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of people had input. Mm -hmm. um, and Sears, in terms of redevelopment, <clears throat> will ultimately be successful if they bring the community what it wants. And so we've got that information. We've got the data about what the community wants to see. And again, they want to see there mm -hmm. something that is got multiple functions, that has some commercial component, has an entertainment component, has a restaurant component, is bikeable, walkable, and also has multi multiple family mm -hmm. housing there mm -hmm. so that perhaps we get some single story mm -hmm. condos for seniors, for mm -hmm. example, all in that one area. It's a huge area to conceptualize what does redevelopment look like? But if we're successful in getting Sears to pick up the phone when we call uh, to talk about the future plans, I think Sears in turn is gonna be really successful. Mm -hmm. And I think we've already done some advanced work on that. Uh, shortly before you officially took office, mm -hmm. we did a bus tour with business mm -hmm. leaders, development leaders, city leaders, and school leaders. And we toured that among other sites in town and stuff like that. And I think that gave our community a head start on trying to visualize and getting the community input into what that can potentially yeah. be in the future. Dan, that was a great event. And mm -hmm. I, I really want to thank you mm -hmm. and the chamber and the board for your leadership on that mm -hmm. one, because it helped for me anyway to quickly launch mm -hmm. the energy that's going to be necessary in order to make this huge transformation happen. You know, not just Sears, but throughout the city of Livonia, we find ourselves at this precipice of change mm -hmm. where we have the ultimate combination 
we have this growing market of seniors who are aging in place in Livonia, while at the same time, we have the highest growing population of millennials buying mm -hmm. homes in the 48154 zip code. That is extremely mm -hmm. rare to not harness that energy and that potential right now to re-envision our future. It, it, it'll be an opportunity mm -hmm. that we'll never forgive ourselves yeah. for losing. That bus tour helped us to get some of our key stakeholders mm -hmm. really energized around that idea. So um, I see this continued partnership between the school, between uh, the schools, between the chamber and between the city of Livonia is really mm -hmm. being the integral force uh, behind mm -hmm. the energy necessary. So thank you again. Yeah, I appreciate that. At least the workforce thing issue uh, that we talked about earlier because community to education to workforce. I mean, it yeah. really is all linked together. We all have to be at the table to make that happen. Absolutely, it's the whole package, mm -hmm. yeah. Last question I have for you, uh, kind of a lighthearted question, but anything that surprised you about the job? You've been in it two months now. Is there anything that kind of surprised you? Whoa, uh, that's part of this. I didn't realize that. Yeah. So I've tried to experience as much of the city as I possibly can. I've done a deep dive with all of our department heads, mm -hmm. looking at their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. That was phase one of mm -hmm. my self-imposed orientation. Phase two um, has been getting out there to lay eyes on the 635 people that work for the city of Livonia. Mm -hmm. So I've been to all three shift changes uh, with the police department. I was there at 6.45 in the morning and 2.45 in the afternoon and then at 10.50 again at mm -hmm. night. Um, I cleared uh, Newburgh Road as part of the crew when we had our very first snowball, I okay. snowfall rather. Yeah. Um, I was up in the truck for that, so that was great fun. Um, there are all sorts of experiences that I've had, and I think the thing that surprises me the most is how young our workforce is. Mm -hmm. um, I have always believed that we've had an amazingly talented and dedicated workforce, but having served for 17 years on the city council, I only got to work with you know maybe the top couple layers of it. I didn't get to see deep down inside, day to day, Who's really making the city hum? And it is a team of really bright young people. And that's across the board mm -hmm. in all of our departments. So um, for me, I look at that and I just think that is incredible opportunity mm -hmm. and really look forward to, to harnessing that talent mm -hmm. and uh, creativity. Um. Mayor Brosnan, I thank you for your time being part of our first ever episode of Cityscape. Uh, we hope everyone watching enjoys this new way to stay engaged in the Livonia community. Thank you for watching Cityscape and we'll see you next time.